So once you've got the design, you've got the layout that you want to do, um, one of the questions that we'll ask is, do you want to do an automatic system or a manual system? Uh, I guess for a budget conscious job, the, the answer is going to generally be manual, which means that they're going to run off of a garden tap and just turn the tap on when they want the water to go out to the garden, or they're going to use a tap, not a tap timer really, it's manual, isn't it? So um, it's really ball valve on, ball valve off. So that's a ball valve for anyone. That's so, or it'll just be a nut and tail onto a tap. Um, then the other side of that is to have an automatic system. An automatic system can comprise of an irrigation controller, which is wall mounted and 24 volts. So you'll plug it in, sorry, 240 volt down to 24 volt. So you'll plug that into your, to your wall and then you'll run irrigation cable out to your valves. The only other side, I guess the other side of the automatic controller is the battery operator controller. So um, we'll drill down into this a bit later on, I think. But uh, it's a battery operated controller that sends an electronic pulse through to a coil that then turns the same valve on. So you'd have to change the top of that for the top of that. So automatic irrigation obviously costs more to set up at the start. If you're doing a bank of four or six solenoid valves or ball valves, the cost is so close. Really, the only additional thing you're really buying is the controller and the cable. Um, a ball valve might only be, you know, it might cost 60 to 70% of a whole solenoid valve. You still have to manifold, so that's a manifold. You still need to manifold a manual system. So if you're looking at putting a manual irrigation system across a large area, I would, in, I'd suggest that you get a price to do both. And then I guess look at the economics of whether or not it's something that either you or your client can afford to do. Uh, automatic gives you so much more flexibility, especially <coughs> with Wi-Fi. That's a Wi-Fi dongle for that controller. Um, the, if you can start being smart about the way that you're delivering the water to the job, then the savings will be made in water and then hopefully it will offset whatever the additional cost was to go from manual to automatic. There's not really any disadvantages or advantage to either of them other than that. No, I guess it goes back to the start where we're talking about planning. Um, if you, I guess a lot of landscapes now, there's quite a significant amount of hardscaping and tiling and paving. Um, we, we, irrigation at some point, and it's normally later in the project, becomes part of this project. Um, where at the start, planning for allowing for conduits to have your irrigation cables under pathways or um, driveways and that sort of stuff is needs to be thought out. You don't necessarily need to buy the cable straight away, but at least get that conduit down. And that's when a lot of the time we see, I guess, the battery controller becoming the only option because you've got a brand new exposed aggregate driveway that's gone in and then they can't get irrigation cable through. So then, and they're not gonna obviously cut a brand new driveway, so now we go to battery, um, which battery's still fine from an automatic point of view, but you've got 12 month changeovers on on um, on the units itself, and I'm sorry, on the battery, and you just need to make sure then you've got your customer actually going out to the valve box and accessing that valve box, whereas they don't necessarily have to touch that, they can just deal with a controller on the wall. So just making sure if you are planning on an automatic system, be prepared at the start to make sure you've got conduits down. Um, you know, an electrician's put a PowerPoint on the wall outside for you or in the laundry or something like that. Yeah.